Matt Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Brought to you by the Well Health Safety Seal, of course, where we uh, we wear it proudly on the front door of the studio. Yeah. Very, very proud of it. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Pat Unleashed on Twitter. If you'd like to uh, get in touch with us during the course of the program, uh, an awful lot to talk about today, as usual. Um, there's a white man fired from a commission for not referring to a black woman as doctor. She kept telling him to, and he kept not doing it. Um, Andrew Cuomo. Of course, has some reasons that uh, people are after him. Uh, you know, it has nothing to do with his guilt or innocence on the uh, on the sexual harassment front. They're just people want attention, and they're jealous of him because he's so wonderful, so <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> wow! Uh, we'll share that with you. Also, uh, Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti wants to refund. The police. I wonder why. Huh. Could it be because crime is on the rise? Murder rates are skyrocketing? And uh, nobody nobody is sh- is showing up in the case of uh, a lot of crimes because there's just not enough police officers to go around anymore? Jeez. Uh, Keith Ellison admitted something amazing on 60 Minutes on Sunday. Uh, wait. It, listen to this. This is absolutely incredible to me. Here's what Keith Ellison said uh, about the George Floyd murder trial with uh, with what's his face, Derek Chauvin. Mm-hmm. Here's what he had to say about okay, why was he not charged with a hate crime? Was this a hate crime? I wouldn't call it that mm. because hate crimes are crimes where there's an explicit motive and uh, of bias. We don't have any evidence that Derek Chauvin factored in Wait. Uh, George Floyd's race as he did what? what he did. You could have charged him with oh. a hate crime under Minnesota law, yeah. and you chose not to. Could right. have, and he just um, told you why. We only charge those crimes that we had evidence to, that we could put in huh. front of a jury to prove. No evidence. If we'd have had a witness that told us that Derek Chauvin made a racial reference, uh-huh. we might have charged him with a t- hate crime. Sure. But I would have needed a witness to say that on the stand. We didn't huh. have it, so we didn't do it. The whole world that is unbelievable. sees this as a white officer killing a black man because he is black. Mm-hmm. And you're telling me that there's no evidence to support that. <laughs> In our society, mm-hmm. there is a social norm that killing certain kinds of people is more tolerable than other kinds of people. In order for us to stop and pay serious attention to this case and be outraged by it, it's not necessary that Derek Chauvin had specific racial in, intent uh, to harm George Floyd. Hmm. The fact is, we mm-hmm. know that through housing patterns, through employment, through wealth, through a whole range of other things, uh, so often people of color, black people, end up with uh, harsh treatment from law enforcement hmm. um, and other folks doing the exact same thing, just don't. If an officer doesn't throw a white neurologist in Eden Prairie, Minnesota to the ground and doesn't uh, uh, sit on top of his neck, is he doing it because this is a fellow white brother? No, he's doing it because he thinks this is an important person and if I treat them badly, uh, somebody's gonna ask me about this. This person probably has lawyers. They probably knows the governor. He probably knows his, he has connections. I can look at the way he's dressed and the way he talks that he's probably, quote, unquote, somebody. And so that's really what it's about. Oh, okay. I, I see. Sure. <laughs> it's about your perception. That's what it's about. It's about Keith Ellison's perception. But to me, the bigger issue there is they had no evidence that there was any, anything about race involved in this. They had no evidence. Nobody ever came forward and said, hey, you know what? This Derek Chauvin guy is a real racist. He uses the N-word all the time. He discriminates against black people when we pull him over. None of that happened. They didn't have anybody who said it. Boy, if they had even an inkling 
Oh, that would have been the centerpiece of the case. Better believe it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, does that certainly doesn't that doesn't uh, exempt him from any wrongdoing. He was still uh, uh, despicable and should not have done what he did. But he did what he did, not out of racism. I mean, they've got no evidence that that played into it at all. We sure didn't treat it that way. Uh, America has been in a in an uproar for over a year. Well, almost a year. That happened in May, I think, last year, right? Yeah. Uh, so um, that changed. I mean, that changed a lot of things, and that turned everything into a racial issue. Everything became race. And that's almost literally everything from every uh, uh, black person who, who was hurt by police, that they're all just assumed to be a racial incident, all the way to, uh, you know, what, uh, what, what, what color your, your flowers are when you buy them at the grocery store <laughs> or a flower shop. That's, that's racist. Yes. I mean, math is racist. <laughs> Everything is racist. Well, calling math racist seems tame compared to one of the stories we have later today, <clears throat> if you'll recall. I don't know if you want to get into that now, but... Uh, uh, yeah. The, 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 there's an item in a bathroom, apparently, that is now racist. There's an item in the bathroom that's the racist. Hand soap dispenser story. That's That's right. Yeah, the hand soap dispenser. So I don't know if you want to I mean, save do. that for later, but it is golden because yeah, this would be a good time. There's to share nothing that. that is not racist, and I'll grab that story for you here. Yeah, grab that story. Uh, I can do that story in three seconds. Do that story. Uh, a student at the University of California, Los Angeles. A lot of people call that. UCLA. Oh, yeah. we should write that down. That seems a little more catchy. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Suggested that hand soap dispensers are the latest form of systemic racism. Duh. <laughs> you act like this is breaking news. I know. I, <laughs> I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't pretend that we don't all know this already. Of course, they're racist. <laughs> Sullivan Israel, a civil engineering student, recounted a debate he attended by his school's Republican group in which a black student said automatic dispensers did not take uh, did not take to her because of the color of her skin. (laughs) Huh. Is this a thing? Justin, come on. Help help us out here. Is this a thing? Uh, Yeah, we only use bar soap here. So. (laughs) Okay. So obviously, it is a thing. Okay, good to know. As one UCLA student claimed during the debate, automatic soap dispensers don't see her hands due to the dark pigment of her skin. Huh. As another student reiterated, soap dispensers are racist because they force black and brown bodies uh, to show their palms, the only light areas of the skin, in order to get soap out. <laughs> is that... Is that a true thing? Get out of here. <laughs> really? I, I can't get the the paper towel dispenser to work. And and I've got Whitey McWhite hands here. So, uh, come on. This is just a... That's just an issue with that soap dispenser. Stop. Automated soap dispensers use motion detectors that trigger the soap uh, to fall. It's a rather motion than, thing. A detection mechanism determined by the color of someone's skin. Not everything so thing. sees color. Good gosh. Oh. Yeah, you need to you need to do motion. So maybe when they flip their hands over, the motion allows the soap to dispense. I, I just I can't. Not take the color it. of her palms. Oh. Wow, that is amazing. You uh, look like an idiot. I'm sure this chick's fun. Israel described how he feels. Uh, how, how he feels the term racism is thrown around too freely mm-hmm. on campus. What? <laughs> Where are you getting that, Israel? Where are you getting that? <laughs> I mean, this is a serious issue. If soap isn't coming out for black people. um, So he says such claims 
diminish bigger charges of racial discrimination. Huh, what a concept. So when you make everything about race, you're sort of disparaging the actual racism that does occur from time to time? Hmm. Yep. That's interesting. When people rant and rave about soap dispensers, uh, it delegitimizes claims of racism when racism actually occurs. Of course, there are still racists in this country. I've met some myself. In fact, I've faced real anti-Semitism throughout my life, he said. Huh. Hmm. What, from a soap dispenser? No, his was uh, trying to get the paper towels out. Oh, so the paper towel... Paper towels. Dispenser was mm-hmm. being anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitic. Probably. Yeah. Mm, wouldn't come out for a Jew. Wow. Yeah, it's weird. You never realize how it's deep weird. racism is. I mean, it is rooted in deep in well, all facets it's of our world. Systemic. Systemic. If, if I may be so bold. You may be. As to put that forward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I just seriously, is this the real world? Is this is this our world? Is this what we get to do now? I, I guess so. We get to talk about guess so. racist hand soap dispensers in the bathrooms. Uh-huh. Why? Don't you think we should be talking about racist I, hand I, soap dispensers? I don't think we should have to. Hmm. Wow. But we do have to because this is our world. Tulsi Gabbard actually sounded like she was almost begging people on this video that she uh, just released uh, to please stop with all of this. I mean, this is... This is heartfelt, you can tell, and I share this sentiment. Uh, Here she is pleading with Americans to stop this nonsense. My dear friends, my fellow Americans, please, please let us stop the racialization of everyone and everything. It's racialism. We are all children of God and are Mm -hmm. therefore family in the truest sense, no matter our race or ethnicity. This is aloha, and this is what our country and the world need. For the mainstream propaganda media and politicians, they want us to constantly focus on our skin color and the skin color of others Mm -hmm. because it helps them politically or financially. Mm. Aloha means respect and love for others. It's what enables us to see beyond our skin color and see the soul, the person within. So let's do our best to cultivate this aloha in our hearts Mm. and see and treat others through this prism of love, not through the prism of race and ethnicity. Please let us not allow ourselves to be led down this dark and divisive path of racialism and hate. Mm -hmm. Racialism is a term I'd Never even heard, I don't think. No, I like it, Before though. this year. But it works. Yeah, uh, people are using it now. Uh, it's a thing. But Tulsi. Racialism. Tulsi, please, please, if you're going to record a video outdoors, don't you, do it on a windy day. Use a windscreen. Use a windscreen. Just saying. Just like a, a shotgun, you know? You just you go outside and you use a windscreen. Mm-hmm. That's all you have to do. All it's really not do. that hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but apparently she didn't have one. But I, I appreciated the message. Mm. Yeah, the message was really good. Except she had to bring that Hawaiian stuff into it. I don't know what that's all about. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three, and it Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, let me tell you about Scoremaster. If you've got some issues with your credit, you need to fix it, and Scoremaster will show you how. The average American has ninety seven points they can add to their credit score. Ninety seven points. You know, you could go from the uh, mid-500s to the mid-600s in one fell swoop. It'd be, I mean, that would help you a lot. Scoremaster isn't credit repair. It's credit science, and it helps you get your points really fast, too. In fact, the average Scoremaster user adds 61 points in 20 days or less. And when you add your points fast, you can save a fortune uh, when you're applying for a loan a credit card, a refi, you're buying a car, whatever the case may be, when you need credit, you need a good credit score. It'll get you a lower rate on the interest. And you can enroll in just minutes, and they'll show you how many plus points you can add to your credit score and how fast you can get them. So go to scoremaster.com slash pat. That's scoremaster.com slash pat. Gray. 
Uh, Virginia is reportedly moving to drop accelerated math education prior to 11th grade. Well, good. Somebody yeah. needs to get rid of this stupid math mm. crap. Mm-hmm. Ugh. It will eliminate all math acceleration for any uh, student under junior year. And that is because of... <laughs> I believe that's because of uh, well, racism. Yeah, there you go. It is racialization. Of, yeah, racialization. Mm, yeah, some school board racism. member saying that uh, math is racist. Right. Uh, uh, accelerated math is accelerated racism. Well, I mean, I can get on board with this argument for sure. Can you? Yeah, yeah, because math is terrible. As currently planned, this initiative will eliminate all math acceleration prior to 11th grade. That is not an exaggeration, nor does there appear to be any direction in how local districts implement this. All 6th graders will take foundational concepts 6. All 7th graders will take foundational concepts 7. All 10th graders will take essential concepts 10. Only 11th and 12th grade is there any opportunity for a choice in higher math courses. How are you supposed to prepare yourself for college co- courses then? That's, yeah. wow. You only have two years to do it, I guess. A website about the initi- initiative states that it will improve equity in mm. mathematics learning opportunities. Oh, that's good. Improve equity. Well, we need equity. Uh-huh. That's like an equal sign. Right. So yeah. everybody has to do the same stuff. You can't do anything on an accelerated or or uh, advanced basis because that would hurt the feelings, I guess, of other people who aren't at your level. It would be inequitable. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Everything is racist. Uh, just like Telsey said, everyone and everything is racialized now, including math. Uh, so that is absolutely asinine. Seriously, if you if you are can you imagine the advanced students and how bored they're going to be <laughs> and how disinterested in school they're going to be when you're not challenging them at all when they're not learning anything cuz they already know it. There's a lot of kids like that who are just they're advanced well, and they need to be challenged a little bit. And this is the goal of socialism, is it not? Mm-hmm. Instead of lifting people up we're pulling we need, everybody we down. Need to pull everybody down. It's the same thing with this math. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're getting too far away. Slow down. We're going to catch mm. up to you. It's, it's, it's tragic. sick. Yeah, it is sick. It's absolutely sick. Uh, oh, by the way, we always we say that we lead with our mistakes. Actually, this wasn't our mistake. Um, the article that we had on this Stanford study from yesterday where we talked about um, the study that showed masks are harmful and ineffective at preventing the spread of COVID-19. The study did say that. It just didn't come from Stanford. So came from a guy who works there. Right. Stanford denies, of course they do, any connection to the author. But the article gives voice to claims that face masks are ineffective at reducing transmission of coronavirus. Uh... And cause harmful oxygen deprivation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're disputing common sense, effectively. But Jeez. anyway, they don't want their name attached to it. State rep in Ohio referenced it during a committee hearing in a Republican, a horrible Republican candidate for Ohio's uh-huh. U.S. Senate seat, shared it on Twitter. Stanford has, of course, disavowed the study completely. The author of the article... Varouche Vane Chaboin yeah, is listed as uh, part of the col- cardiology division at the Veterans Affairs Palo Alto Healthcare System at Stanford University. And where? At Stanford University. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Huh. But he has no affiliation with Stanford, according to the Wait. university. But you just... Doesn't he just work at the Veterans Affairs Palo Alto? Healthcare system at Stanford University, so it's not related to Stanford. I mean, there's some ambiguity there when you say at Stanford. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the study is not a Stanford study, according to uh, Julie Gracious in a statement. She's a Stanford School of Medicine spokesperson. Hmm. The author's affiliation is 
inaccurately attributed to Stanford, and we have requ- requested a correction. Okay, well, you got it. It's fr- it's actually not from Stanford. It is from the <laughs> Veterans Affairs Palo Alto Healthcare System at Stanford. Wait. Okay, but, but it's, it's not. Doesn't have anything to do with Stanford, except that it's there at Stanford. Stanford. But that sounds but similar that's the to only Stanford. Thing. Like it does. It sounds weirdly similar. Huh. But it has nothing to do with it. <laughs> the healthcare system at Stanford right. has nothing to do with Stanford University at all. So, huh? Yeah. I didn't Just know that. Just wanted to clear that up. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't change the fact that the masks don't do anything. They're completely ineffective. And every study we've seen, whether it's at Stanford, not at Stanford, <laughs> in Denmark, in, yeah. in the UK, Thank you. in the United States of America, in Australia, they've all shown the same thing. It doesn't do anything. Which is what they said in the very beginning before they came absolutely ma- mandatory. And if it does anything, it it makes it worse. Yes. Yeah, oxygen deprivation. Huh. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a good thing. Hmm. And then you're getting that oxygen deprivation sometimes in the heat of competition. As you're exerting yourself, a lot of these athletes are being made to wear them uh, during basketball games or soccer matches or whatever. Our our world makes no sense, Pat. I know. I want to go back to simpler times. It wasn't that long ago when our biggest issue was racist hand soap dispensers and bathrooms. Those were the good old days, you know, when times Mm -hmm. were simpler and we just had to worry about the racial inequities in the bathroom. How old were you five minutes ago? Oh, my gosh, right? I'm not sure I was even born yet. I don't even remember the last 22 minutes. Right? (laughs) Oh, That's great. Making the apocalypse fun here on Pat Gray Unleashed, everybody. That's exactly what we're doing. Another study... Is it? It finds anybody still wearing a mask. <laughs> this is from the Babylon Bee. <laughs> it's a study the Babylon Bee did, but yeah. it has nothing to do with the Babylon Bee. <laughs> they want you to know that. <clears throat> They're totally disavowing this study. A new study has found that anyone still wearing a mask at this point is probably just <laughs> super ugly. <laughs> That's got to be the truth, really. Come on. If, if you're still wearing a mask, just admit it. <clears throat> you're That's ugly. great. You're just ugly at this point. The study looked at thousands of, Ameri- of Americans still wearing masks and thousands who have long since thrown away all their masks. The findings were conclusive. The vast majority of people who still <laughs> choose to wear a mask everywhere they go were much uglier than those who are currently blessing the world by letting everybody see their beautiful faces. <laughs> Look, the vaccine is out there. Numbers are way down. Your risk of dying is very, very low. Mm-hmm. If you're still wearing a mask at this point, let's be honest, mm-hmm. you probably have a very homely face, according <laughs> to Dr. Vance Ryder, a very handsome doctor, not wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> you might have what we call a face for radio whoa, 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 in the whoa, business, whoa, that's if a you quote? know what I'm saying. That's a quote from, from oh, a good that, doctor. That yeah, hurts. That kind of hurt. Because, I mean, that sort hits close hurt. to home. Like, let's just be honest here. We're not judge. We're not going to judge you if you want to keep wearing the mask because you have a sad, no good loser face. Fine. <laughs> no one's going to stop you. Right. Just don't keep pushing for mask mandates for those who have incredibly good looking faces. Yeah. The study also found that those who no longer wear a mask are tremendous, beautiful, maybe the best looking people of all time. Well then, I see. <laughs> Okay, mm-hmm. so that's pretty definitive. That is very definitive. I would say. Uh huh. Until we get to this liberal, oh. <clears throat> another uh, liberal woman, in her car. In her car. In her car. Again, there's. <laughs> why do you always do this stuff in your car? Because they're embarrassed to be in public. Here she is, pissed off about people not wearing masks. Honey, if you can't put a simple cloth across your face to keep your neighbor from dying. I don't ever want to hear you talk about God or how you're pro-life oh. ever again. Oh, shut up. I don't oh, care what you th- oh. want to hear me talk about and what you don't. Oh. oh, my gosh, what stupidity. That is... That's... To keep your neighbor from dying. The mask is going to keep my neighbor from dying. 
First of all, even if my neighbor gets COVID-19, there's a 98.5% chance they're not going to die. So by her logic, though, am I supposed to believe that she cares more about me, this ugly adult stranger, when, when I can't even get her to agree to the saving of the innocence of life in the womb? Yeah. Right. Because that's kind of the logic. I mean, it's the same group, really. Mm. It's the same group pushing this. The far left, they, they just want us to be miserable along with them. That's mm -hmm. really the, the, the end game here. Look, I'm miserable. Let's be miserable together. And you could flip her little fun little game there with, with uh, I don't want to hear you're pro-life. Well, I don't want to hear that you're pro-choice when you won't let me have that. And don't yeah. make me right. think that you care about me when I can't get you to care about a baby. Shut up. Ugh. Yeah, she didn't care about her neighbors, please. That's <laughs> that's ridiculous. And why? Again, why is it always in their car? Why don't you do this at home or outside? Because they're or... embarrassed for themselves. They should be. They're not going to do this out in public. It, it, she's wearing a mask. I guarantee you that lady wears a mask driving around. She took it off for the video. Right. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. can, we, can we do this real quick since we're talking about masks and when we're going to leave them on and take them off and stuff? Chick-fil-A, mm -hmm. can you stop with your employee? If you don't want to open your restaurant, that's fine. Drive through, whatever. You it's guys not fine, actually. You're open your restaurant for the love of heaven. Yeah. How much money are they saving on, <sighs> on costs inside <laughs> there and stuff? You know they're A loving ton. this. I mean, refills. There's no yeah. refills anymore. Right. Uh, we could go on with the cost of building maintenance and plumbing and all this stuff, but... You go through the drive-thru. I'm so sick and tired of your employees standing outdoors on a beautiful day, in fact, wearing a mask, all of them, outside, wearing masks. And I ask them, like, come on, what, what's the deal here? Well, we're just, we're told we have to wear them out here. Hey, do you know that the uh, virus is not passed outdoors? Do you know that? Maybe you should tell your manager that. You know what? The, the, there's almost no cases of the virus being passed from human to human outside. And it's also becoming a thing <clears throat> where you go through the drive-thru. I haven't experienced this, but plenty of people have. Where you go through the drive-thru, it's usually at a coffee shop. And they won't. we've had a video, in fact, where they won't give you your order mm -hmm. until you put a mask on. It, you think this is about safety? This is all about control and shared misery. That's all this is at this point. Stop! Oh, yeah. How about the good old days? Remember when the yeah. uh, hand soap dispensers in the bathroom were racist? were racist? That's all we had yeah. to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> good times. Twenty-eight minutes ago. Yeah, I, it wasn't quite that long ago. Yeah, but I mean, because twenty-eight minutes ago, right. I think dinosaurs <laughs> roamed the earth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's ancient history yeah, at this yeah. point. And, and you know what? The speed uh -huh. the world is moving. It does feel like the dinosaurs were roaming the earth when we woke up this morning. Yeah, it does. Oh, man. This is good times. Uh, how long is a video that proves the COVID shield works? Is that Oh, is that's that quick. quick. You can do that real quick. <clears throat> All right. Let's, COVID let's, shield actually works. Instead of wearing the mask, wear the shield. Yeah, go to the, at the convenience store. Look at this. Just oh, guy drops his bow. Bow. He drops his soda. See? Boom. And then it turns into a missile. And the COVID shield, first of all, it nearly <laughs> takes out the couple. And then it nearly How takes weird. out the cashier. Whoa. And the COVID shield saves the day. How did that how did that happen? He dropped it in the carbonation, just created a missile. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what we did out here with an experiment with uh, dry ice we got from Brooker's once. I've never seen that before. Yeah. I, that's just, cooler than it hitting his face shield, but I'm glad the face shield worked right. for him. Is that why? Came in really handy. So look, uh, the, the face shield has saved a life, Pat. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, that soda would have killed him dead. Would have gone right fast. through his skull. Right through his skull. Thank goodness for that face shield. Thank goodness. <clears throat> what a weird video. That is really something. <laughs> that would have been me, by the way, doing that. <laughs> Either that or dying from the impaling. Got some tweets here from the pickled squirrel. I'm Lily White, but I can't get the soap dispensers to work all the time. Does, right? this, does this mean I'm I'm black on some level? Oh, cool. Hmm. Interesting question. I don't. I really don't know. Then I, I really don't know. Seriously though, I, I think I'm a brother. Because mm -hmm. I can't get the soap dispenser to work. I can't. You're a get brother the, from another mother. The paper towel dispenser to work. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Wow. Cool. Beautiful Stable Genius tweets, when a soap dispenser is racist, there's zero critical thinking happening at all, and no hope critical thinking will happen for these people in any aspect of life. Imagine living a life like that. Wow. Yeah, it's it's sad and pathetic. It, it really is. In addition to being so irritating to the rest of us, but get off my lawn tweets. Maybe I'm the idiot here, but who the hell dispenses soap onto the back of their hands? <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> yeah, she's saying that she has to expose her palms so that she it can be dispensed. Like, that's an unusual thing. Like, nobody does that. <laughs> Every <laughs> single person alive does that. <laughs> wow. Carl Smith tweets, Newsflash, the civil engineering student's contention that soap dispensers are the latest sign of systemic racism is actually a sign of systemic stupidity. Demanded tuition refund. Yeah. And uh, Galt Shrug, the Lego movie taught me everything is awesome. CNN taught me everything is racist. So are we to conclude that racism is awesome? Okay, wait now. Oh, no. <laughs> well, when you're part of a team. So if you're part of a team that's racist, then yes. I, I, I think racism would be awesome at yeah. that point. Yeah, that team wears hoods. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, 888 900 We got this uh, from Vicky. Jim Crow 2.0, courtesy of the Madison School District. Oh, yeah. yeah. After the uh, Chauvin verdict, mm-hmm. schools there in Madison wanted to discuss race in America with parents. Okay. Uh, so they had a uh, Zoom link for parents of color. Whoa. And a Zoom link for whitey parents. Oh, Okay. Stop it. How is that okay? Seriously, how is that okay? So, hold on. Why, are we are segregating now? Uh-huh. Again? Segregation to... this time is good. It's the right, right thing to do. So, you're supposed to have a conversation, mm-hmm. but only with those that look like you. Okay? It's <laughs> unbelievable. Which they would say, why are you in an echo chamber? You need to listen to the members of the black community. Well, yeah. I would Aren't we like supposed to, to learn? But I'm not allowed to click that Zoom link. What if I join your Zoom meeting, but not with video? Then you won't know I'm there. Oh, uh, yeah. And you won't know you got a whitey on the line. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's smart, man. That's what I'd do. That's Trick em. smart. Trick them. And then you have to, like, uh, I guess, uh, what, is it going to be, like, a test? How do we know there's not a white person on the line, you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there's got to be some test, then. How did they get away with this? I, 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 I just don't understand it. I really don't understand it. It's maddening. It's depressing. It's all of the above. If if you are a perceived Democrat or you lean left, then all of this stuff is perfectly fine. You can be as racist as you want. You can be as segregationist as you want. You can go to a former KKK Grand Cyclops' funeral and praise him up and down to the world. And that's perfectly fine. But... If you're on the right and you say, hey, you know, that I like that guy. He was a friend of mine. I would have voted for him for president. And he was perceived to be against civil rights. Uh, then you've got to be drummed out of office and humiliated and ignored the rest of your life. Well, see, he made a fatal error. The, the second guy in your example, he has an R after Trent Lott, name. by the way. Mm-hmm. Yes. Trent Lott did that. Now... How many people spoke at uh, Robert Byrd's funeral on the left? You had Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Biden. I mean, all the mainstays, all the big wigs, the elites in the Democrat Party all excused his KKK nonsense. Mm -hmm. Excused that entire part of his racist existence where he fought against civil rights. And... In fact, fought against blacks even having rights to live in the area. Burning crosses on people's lawns and things. I mean, that is unbelievable. Robert Byrd was a recruiter for the KKK. He didn't he wasn't just in it. He was a recruiter for them. I, I love it when the left tries to justify that Robert Jeez. Byrd wasn't the grand cyclops. No, he no. was the he was the grand yeah he was the grand cyclops he no. wasn't the grand dragon or something okay or grand wizard or yeah. whatever that yeah 
But the point is, he expanded the group. Yeah. By going and getting other, that was his job to go and convince people that they're racist and they need right. to join this white cult. Oh my gosh! Right. I, but ugh. but that's all fine, and we can love that guy, and he can be our mentor to our current president. He was a mentor to him. <laughs> help us, Lord! <laughs> it's just, it's unbelievable. Us. I can't. Seriously, it's <laughs> unreal. <laughs> When you stop and think about it. I know, when you, it, when you sound it out geez. and you walk it through. <laughs> it's really hard to believe. I mean, this is a... It's hard to believe it could happen. <laughs> it's a Jim Beam morning? It sure is. Is that what that, it is? That's exactly what kind of morning it is. I have determined for sure. <laughs> All right. Yes. 888 By the way, uh, only fully vaccinated U.S. tourists will be allowed into the, uh, the EU this summer. Like I'd want to go there, right? I mean, you—they're the ones with the bigger problem than we have right now. Uh huh. Vaccinated tourists will be permitted to visit uh, Europe this summer. Uh, U.S. tourists, tourists who have been fully vaccinated against COVID nineteen, will be permitted to visit those nations, the EU nations, after more than a year of restricting non essential travel due to the pandemic. Yeah, I did check though. Uh... Iceland, not uh, one of the 27 member nations of the EU. So beer baths are still a thing. Oh, okay. Okay. So we can go to Iceland? We can go take a beer bath in Iceland still. My uh, pilgrimage, my yearly pilgrimage to Reykjavik is still on then, Yes, I guess. That's great. Yes, yes, yes. Good. You typically go up (laughs) via uh, Newfoundland, Newfoundland, club some baby seals on your way up to Iceland. On to Reykjavik. (laughs) I would actually love to go to Iceland. Yeah. Check out those uh, uh, volcanoes and things. It'd be really cool. So cool. Uh, some U.S. states have balked at the notion of requiring proof of vaccination status as a prerequisite for certain activities. South Dakota, Florida, Texas, and Arizona all banning vaccine passports in recent weeks. Good. Uh, but the EU, of course, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, well, so it begins. Their oppressive nature. I mean, this is just the beginning. Oh yeah. And this is this is. This is just the first shoot. Uh, I think we're starting to realize, right, that this is going to be around forever. This is just going to stay with us now. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be a thing. For your safety and health, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's the purpose. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be a thing. Masks are go- going to be a thing in some areas. I don't think they're going to be in Texas, but they will be a thing elsewhere. And certainly in Europe, they will be. Uh, vaccine passports will be a thing. And you won't be able to do certain things without them. Maybe even go to Disney. You might not be able to go to Disneyland or Disney World without a vaccine passport. Hmm. Yep. I, I'm, I understand. Yep. Serves them right. New reality. Because that, if there's anything that's going to curb their tourism, I think it would be that. There's going to be a lot of people resistant to that. A lot. And, and if you want to lose half of your uh, attendance, mm-hmm. go ahead. Go and ahead. It, it's going to be a thing where there's going to be, like, there already was pre-pandemic. There's the Walmart crowd and there's the Target crowd. Mm-hmm. It's even going to, it's going to be, those lines are going to be even more obvious now. Speaking of Target, by the way, have you seen their latest commercials? Uh, they, what is it? They, they say at the very beginning, they support uh, black businesses. They then they show a lesbian couple, then they show. I mean, they they is, are is just black lesbian all couple? about diversity and inclusion and wokeness, and it's all are they? just leftist propaganda. Are they? Here's your uh, here's your target CEO. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's Looks a pasty white, pasty he, white for, dude for such a diverse company. Why is the CEO <laughs> pasty white? <laughs> The hypocrisy is I just fantastic. Right? I love it. Stop it. I love it. Let me tell you about Built Bar. If you want something uh, delicious, something that you can count on and makes the world seem normal again. Actually, this is not normal because protein bars usually taste like uh, chalk or cardboard or uh, Dow Chemical products. Uh, these, though, taste like candy bars. They are fantastic. Nine amazing flavors. The uh, chocolate nut flavors, I've got two of those. I've got seven chocolate nut free flavors. The bars are covered in 100% chocolate. 
They're uh, healthy for you, really high in protein, low in calories, sugar and carbs, uh, high in the protein and the fiber, and they're just really good. And if you get really hungry at work and you can't get away or you didn't bring something, make sure you have some Built Bars handy, and they will get you through it. Go to BuiltBar.com and use the promo code PAT to get 15% off your first order. Use the promo code PAT for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Pat Gray Unleashed. Uh, Hillary Kennedy is going to be in here at uh, 7.30 from the 4-Minute Buzz talking about uh, the UFC the weekend they had there uh, in Jacksonville, 15,000 people, mostly maskless. And masks were uh, uh, voluntary. You could wear them or not. They were it's, optional. That's America right there. Yep. What you just said, it's voluntary. It's optional. You can, you can wear them or don't. And people mostly didn't. And so uh, a good time was had by pretty much all people there. Um the biggest event since I think the pandemic started, certainly indoors, right? I mean, 15,000 some people were there. So anyway, uh, Hillary's a huge UFC fan, so we'll talk to her about that and some other things. Like the uh, Rose Namajunas, who will not, who will not stop talking uh, about communism mm-hmm. and how bad it is, even though they've apparently asked her to. Not the UFC, because Dana White at the UFC is a conservative guy and he runs a conservative league and a lot of the people in it are conservatives so it's pretty refreshing i would just say he's pro-america yeah definitely you yeah, know and he was pro-trump that's for sure mm-hmm. he campaigned for him so um it kind of interesting because who else does that nobody i know of in mm-hmm. a major sport you think of any head of a major sport who said anything good about donald trump i don't think so uh, triple eight, nine hundred thirty three, ninety three. So the guys, I mean, he's, he's going against the grain. He's got some courage. Uh, I like him. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, what are we going to do with all the dead batteries? Once all the electric vehicles die. Oh no. Or the, at least their batteries die because these things don't last forever. And the rate at which we're growing the industry is absolutely scary, according to Paul Anderson from Birmingham University, talking about the market for electric cars in Europe alone. By 2030, the EU hopes there will be 30 million electric cars on European roads. 30 million. It's something that's never really been done before at the rate of growth for a completely new product, he said. And while electric Vehicles may be carbon neutral during their working lifetime. He's concerned about what happens when they run out of road. I love it. In particular, (laughs) what happens to the batteries? (laughs) Yeah, that's what we've been asking for 20 years. You want the air pollution now or the ground pollution later? In 10 to 15 years, when there are large numbers coming to the end of their life, it's going to be very important that we have a recycling industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I bet we don't have one. I love this. While most EV components are much the same as those of conventional cars, the big difference, of course, is, yes, the gigantic battery. (laughs) That is toxic to the earth. More toxic than anything in a combustion engine. While traditional lead batteries are widely recycled, The same can't be said for the lithium-ion versions used in electric cars. (laughs) EV batteries are larger and heavier than those in regular cars and are made up of several hundred individual lithium-ion cells, all of which need dismantling. (laughs) This is so funny. They contain hazardous materials, yes, as as I just mentioned, and have an inconvenient tendency to explode. If disassembled incorrectly. Oops! <laughs> Currently, globally, it's very hard to get detailed figures for what percentage of lithium-ion batteries are recycled, but the value everyone quotes is about 
5%. <laughs> In some parts of the world, it's considerably less. <laughs> Wait, how do you get so considerably great. less than 5%? Because uh, there's nobody, no recycling going on. Uh-huh. I'll bet in the United States we're not recycling uh, lithium batteries at all. Recent proposals from the EU would see EV suppliers responsible for making sure that their products aren't simply dumped at the end of their life. And manufacturers are already starting to step up to the mark. Are they? Nissan, for example, is now reusing old batteries from its Leaf cars in the automated guided vehicles that deliver parts to workers and factories. Volkswagen's doing the same, but recently opened its first recycling plant. Um, Renault is now recycling all of its electric car batteries, but <clears throat> who buys Renault? That's a great point. <laughs> no, but, but we'll maybe recycle. in France they buy that but, car. But we'll recycle your batteries. Yeah, no. No, but, thank you. But no, you'll be doing no. such good for the earth. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say no again. <laughs> no, thank you on your Renault. <laughs> we are aiming at being able to address 25% of the recycling market. We want to maintain this level of coverage. And, of course, this would cover by far the needs of Renault. That's so great. That they're finally starting to wake up to, oh, you know what? All these cars have these freaking toxic batteries. What are we going to do when the car stops running? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. They're just now starting to worry about it. When we mentioned it, I don't know, at the very beginning of this thing. with With the Toyota, whatchamacallit thing. Liberalism. Come on. They have a short term plan for everything. For everything. Yep. Except for control. Got some tweets here uh, to get us started. Cindy Lou Who tweets, So do soda companies get sued if a bottle is used as a weapon? Oh, as in this convenience store where oh, yeah. this happened. Look at this. Fortunately, Pew. Pew. guy had a face shield on, saved his life. Boom. Look at that. Wow. Jeez. I mean, that is really something. That is splitting the uprights, and then ouch! Golly! Wow! That, that's that's literally how <clears throat> I'm going to go. Yeah. Either being impaled by a flying soda bottle, or mm. I'm going to have committed the crime. Anti-fascist uh, s- uh, tweets. I can't tell you how many times an automatic door sensor doesn't open a door for me. All this time, I thought I was dead, like the guy in the Sixth Sense. <laughs> but apparently, it was just racism. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, proud Mr. Graybeard, let's have an in-depth conversation separately. Left-wing logic at its sharpest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the school that's going to do uh, one conversation on Zoom for for people of color, and then Whitey gets a separate uh, location. Uh, Publius tweets, if we ship the DNC and the rest of the races to Guam, will it then please capsize? Capsize. <clears throat> the uh, Steve 42 Sounds like the flights to Europe will be uh, cheaper this summer. Mm-hmm. Yep. Watcher 17, equity is based on math, so it must be racist. That's a, that's a thinking person's <laughs> that tweet is right there. Person. That's a thinking person's tweet. Uh, the, speaking of math, it uh, wasn't hard to do the math of how many people watched the Oscars. It was uh, three. Three people. Did, One, two, three. Three. Did you carry the three one? Three people. Yeah. So if we put the 18 yeah. minute together along with the seven minute together, you got 22 minutes. You sell it with mm-hmm. eight minutes of ads, you got 30 minutes. You got your 30 minute. Yeah. But only three people. 30 minute, but only three people. Jeffy was one of them, probably. <laughs> it was actually under 10 million for the first time ever. Wow. It was the lowest rated <clears throat> of all time. It was down 54% overall from last year. And it was down 64% in the key demographic. Uh, nobody cares about the Oscars anymore. First of all, first of all, I didn't see a single one of the movies. Did you? Did you see any of the nominated movies? I have no idea Hell what no. Nomadland is all about. <laughs> I have no, I, no interest. <laughs> I don't want to know it. I don't want to watch it. I don't care about it. Nomadland was apparently the big winner, though. Uh, I think it won the... Best Picture Oscar, yeah. and uh, Frances McDormand won Best Actress. Is that right? I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, uh, very few people watched. Also, they did some 
they did have some of the celebrities right. together. Right. But they were six feet apart, right? No. Oh. They were not socially distanced. Were they wearing masks? And they were not wearing, wearing masks. What? Yeah, I don't know what was going on there. Wait a minute. They were not virtue signaling. Uh, and they just hypocritically went naked faced. Aren't wow. they the ones who tell us all the time? Yeah, wear a mask. Wear a mask socially distanced. Although I'll keep my social distance, but this world needs you to hang. Until we find the vaccination. There's no substitute for love. So love yourself and love your family. family. Love your neighbor and your friend. Anytime you love a stranger, just your friend you ain't man yet. Beautiful. By the way, that that same demographic that they Mm -hmm. had like a one point whatever rating. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, 18 mm-hmm. to 49 year olds. Uh, the Super Bowl, by comparison, had a 31.0 rating. Holy cow! <laughs> Just FYI on and that. And the one. Super Bowl's numbers were down too, but they still had a 31 share, uh, whereas the Oscars had a one something. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, and the year Good. before, 33.4 share, right? And then the year before that, 37. In other words, the Super Bowl. Hmm. Uh, draws many, many more viewers than the Oscars. But yeah, they were dancing mm. together and sitting elbow to elbow. I, mm. I, mm. The, uh, the hypocrisy. I, I you know, the hypocrisy is what bothers me. I mean, I'm glad that they're getting together yes. and stopping the pretense and the nonsense. But while they're doing that, they're telling us we should be distanced and wearing masks all the time. I'm just all the time fed up with it. Mm-hmm. As I'm fed up with things like this, Epicurious uh, has cut out beef recipes now. <laughs> Why? Because uh, climate change, climate change. <clears throat> War on cows. Oh my gosh. They say we know that home cooks want to do better. No, no, you don't. You don't know anything of the kind. <laughs> I, I hope these people go out of business in, in the next six months. I, I am so sick of this. Holier than thou nonsense, left wing morons trying to tell us what we want, what we think, what our opinions are when you don't have any idea. Condé Nast's culinary magazine Epicurious announced yesterday they will no longer publish beef recipes, saying it no longer wants to give airtime to one of the world's worst climate offenders. Epicurious tweeted, <clears throat> Today, we announced that Epicurious is cutting out beef. It won't appear in new Epi recipes, articles, newsletters, or on social. This isn't a vendetta against cows or people who eat them. It's a shift about sustainability. Not anti-beef, but pro-planet. Yeah, shut up. So ridiculous. The magazine explained in its full statement that it's... Shift is solely about sustainability, not about giving airtime, of course, to one of the world's climate offenders. Uh, The outlet also acknowledged that there are problems with chicken, seafood, soy, and almost every other ingredient, adding that in a food system so broken, almost no choice is perfect. In a food system so (laughs) broken? You mean the food system that gets food to just about everybody on this planet? That food system, the one where almost all Americans are fed, uh, where hardly anyone goes to bed regularly on an empty stomach. It just doesn't happen very often in America. There are some exceptions, but it's rare. It's the food system we have that is feeding so many people that has caused the world to have a bigger problem with obesity <laughs> than starvation. Thank you. For the first time in world history, there's a bigger problem with eating too much rather than eating not enough. Not having enough to eat. <laughs> and that's what they have a problem with? It's absolutely ridiculous. It's asinine. We know that home cooks want to do better. Really? Do you? Who have you talked to about this? You know how many people eat beef? Almost everybody. I, you know, I, there are so few 
actual vegetarians or vegans who really live that, uh, there are far more. I wonder what the uh, I wonder what the meat eating percentage is in the United States of America. Why would you slap most of your most of your potential customers right across the face like this? Why would you do that? Mm, uh, well, because this agenda is so important to them. Let's see here. <clears throat> Only about 5% of Americans have self-identified as vegetarian. 5%. So I guess that's a I guess we have to go on the assumption 95% are meat eaters then. Right. That's what, yes. That's what you would assume. <laughs> yes. 95 I thought it was me you know, maybe 85. 95%. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Epicurious made the decision now because while beef consumption is significantly down from where it was 30 years ago, it's been slowly creeping up in the past few years. The Hill reported that the brand acknowledged that products made from cow's milk are almost as <laughs> are almost as destructive <laughs> to the environment as beef. Uh-huh. But it has not said if it will stop publishing recipes requiring dairy. Uh, what are they going to publish? I'd like to know if they stop... If they stop with beef and they stop with dairy, what what kind of recipes are you going to have that people are going to be, oh, I want to eat that? And this is all very about few cow farts. Right? Yes, just too much. Right, cow farts. While beef recipes and the mention of meat will be completely scrapped from the Epicurious social media feeds, homepage, articles, and newsletters, beef recipes previously published will remain available on its website. You shouldn't use it, though. Eh, Find somebody else. Uh, Because I... Man, we shouldn't be supporting nonsense like this. For years, cattle production has become a target of environmental activists who argue that methane from cow farts... Oh, there we go. Oh, no. The very next line. Oh, no. Methane! Methane! (laughs) Methane from cow farts is a leading contributor to climate change. Uh Well... Let me ask you this, then. Oh. When you kill the cow, it stops farting. So isn't it better to kill it and eat it than to let it continue to fart in the pasture? I, I, How, where's, the, where's, where's the hole? Where's the flaw in the logic? There's no arguing with Pat Gray logic. Thank you. That right there. Thank you. The cow stops farting. W- once you kill it. <laughs> if it farts while it's on your on your plate... Uh, I wouldn't eat it. Then everybody okay. wins, right? The meat eater gets the hamburger. <laughs> right. The 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 eco freaks get the less less methane. Well, I didn't want to say the methane. 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 Uh, that uh that's a legacy yeah. from Martin that he has yes. passed down through generations of board ops in there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is unbelievable. I can't. Beef consumption has been in the news in recent days following Biden's vow to cut America's greenhouse gas emissions by 50% over the next nine years. An ambitious goal, you think? That could mean a <laughs> monumental overhaul of the U.S. economy. Uh, well, it uh, sure uh, could. Uh-oh, someone found the... The key ingredient to that story, right. it's not cows, it's not the planet, it's what? No, no, it's not that. No, all right. No, it's controlling the U.S. economy. <laughs> yes. Uh. Since the Biden administration hasn't yet released the details, outlets like the New York Times and Daily Mail pulled research from experts to show possible changes that would be needed mm-hmm. in order for the U.S. to reach the goal. Uh-huh. Uh, The mail drew backlash from outlets like the Washington Post who criticized the outlet for pointing to University of Michigan study on the impact of limiting meat consumption, including some extreme scenario examining the impact of America's eating just four pounds of red meat per person annually. Well, yeah, that's a lot of cows that continue to live. And yes, fart Mm -hmm. uh, as they live. Several conservative lawmakers and commentators pushed back on the prospect of red meat becoming a target, leading the Biden administration to vow that cutting out beef beef was not on the table. 
There is no effort designed to limit people's intake of beef coming out of President Biden's White House or USDA. Uh-huh. Oh, I, that's not true. Right. I've seen many statements that lead you to believe that, no, that is on the table. They're yeah. trying to take beef off the table. They're just not going to have him say it until after right. he's reelected. Absolutely. He's one of those things where, you know, I'll have more leverage after the election. Yeah. Yes. Uh, wow. So our entire way of life mm-hmm. is under siege right now from this Biden administration and from his left-wing allies in uh, corporate America and the media conglomerates. Nothing they're is off all, limits. Nothing is. No, I mean, there are yeah. no sacred cows, Pat. Oh, that was totally intentional. Of course it was. Yeah. Just gut check. Stop. Stop. Wait, I thought it was kind of right. funny. <laughs> right? A little bit? No, not little, really. Little sacred cows. Mm-hmm. We kind of yeah. tied it in there. Okay. No. 888 933 More Pat Gray Unleashed coming up. Why shotgun? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Ellen Seidman, who's a blogger for parents.com. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> by the way, uh huh. What? This buy a shotgun thing, this whole we're going after guns because there's a pandemic. There's, a, there's an epidemic of mass shootings in this country. There were, I don't know, 7,014 of them last month alone. It, there, there were something like supposedly 54 in March. I, you know, maybe if you include the Chicago shootings, gangbangers, all that kind of stuff, maybe then, but not of the kind they're talking about. In fact, Northeastern University criminologist James Allen Fox, who is the leading researcher on this topic over the last 35 years, he said there is, quote, there is no evidence that we're in the midst of an epidemic of mass shootings. Mm. The number of incidents and casualties are simply too small to make such claims. And, he says, the media coverage of shootings often ends up creating a false sense that gun violence, which is at or near historic lows, is ubiquitous and growing. Gun violence is at or near historic lows. You would not ever get that from the media you would think uh, the the exact opposite would you not oh yeah i mean seriously how many stories did we see that there were 54 mass shootings in the last month something to that effect it was a ton like wh- where are you getting that oh they they just they make it up for the most part got some tweets here from jeffy fish star uh mm-hmm. recycling is one of those things that sounds like a great idea but then you realize That it actually requires so much work that no one's actually doing it correctly. I'm why it was email sent. Oh, we found the reason? (laughs) Yeah, for why traffic problems email were sent. And this guy is... He's why. Uh He or she. Uh, How long until you're only allowed to wear a mask that matches your skin color? Right. If I wear the mask, the wrong mask, I could be accused of blackface. That's uh, true. Mustang Vet tweets, why is the food industry so discriminatory against red meat? I'm waiting for the cattle riots to start. <laughs> cattle riot. Oh, that's a good name for a band. Stu's Hairless Guinea Pig tweets, I might just go back on my mostly meat-based diet in defiance of the anti-meat cult. Only this time it'll be only meat. Yeah, didn't you do something mm-hmm. like that a long time ago? What is that? <laughs> yeah, the Atkins. Atkins diet. Is that all, that's really is not Atkins, but oh. that's how most people do Atkins, is just a lot of meat. Like meat for breakfast? Yeah, meat, meat for, for everything. You have bacon for breakfast. Yeah, you oh, okay. Hamburgers. You know, you just eliminate bread and carbs and stuff. Yeah, so. That's cool. Mm-hmm. What if you get hungry in the middle of the night and you get it for a snack? You have to like go in. Like, meat should be meat. Fire up the old Foreman grill? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> He, he actually has more balance than I used in my Atkins diet. Uh, mm. But Atkins, whose first name I can't remember right doctor. now. Doctor. Doctor. Yeah, Dr. Atkins. Yeah. It worked out, you know, getting named that at birth. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that did go well. That's a lot of pressure, though. Is it Robert Atkins? Sure. Dr. Atkins, anyway. Yeah. Uh, recommended I, I... a balanced approach. Mine was not so balanced. It was mostly me. Mostly me. Huh. Well, so. my, my my original birth name I had to change it for radio, but it was Rockstar. 
Oh, right. Rockstar Malinak. Oh. And then I got about 30 hmm. years old or so, and I was like, that's not happening. Yeah, I knew you before you were 30, and uh, I never called you a rock star. At 20. So. I was about 20. I, it's so long ago. I can't remember when yeah. I changed my name to Keith. Okay. It's, it's been a while, though. Keith. I'll tell you that. It's been... did, why did I go with that, though? That's. I don't know. It's a stupid name. Right? So. Ooh, sorry, Mom. <laughs> But he's right. Kevin he's, or Josh. he's completely right. Kevin or Josh, right? By the way, that is one thing everyone calls me is Kevin. Like they, when they really? meet me or something, like I, I still get emails from people and they start off with Kevin. I'm like, my name is in the email address. Oh, but Keith is in it. But when we do the Jay Leno thing. Uh, Kevin, no, did you read about this? Has see this nothing to do with it. it might have to do I with don't that. I think so. It might. Come on, Jay. Did, did you see this? That's crazy, Kevin, Hey, Kevin, did you read about this? They know my baby? name's Keith. Come Kevin, on, is, uh, that's from the Tonight Show with the yeah. Jay Leno. That's not Keith's name. And then you, <laughs> if you something Jay Leno calls a sidekick because that's his name. Uh-huh. So, that is crazy, Jay. Kevin, you read about this? You see it in the paper today? What you got, man? <laughs> what you got? <laughs> Americans aren't excited about cor- Coke's corporate dance right now i <laughs> know <laughs> <laughs> mere weeks after going public with stern words about the new election law mm-hmm. in georgia which was continually lied about coke has become far more muted in their corporate <laughs> bellow oh whoa what, what? <laughs> a new poll came out to show more than pushback from select citizens has taken place there's widespread rejection of the company and their bold pronouncement. Uh, people are sick and tired of this stuff, and they're using less Coke products now. Good! <laughs> Good! Uh, that I mean, how else are you supposed to send a message other than not buy their product anymore? Mm-hmm. If you can't keep your mouth shut, if you can't at least do some research on, on, the, uh, on the law you're talking about, which, by the way... Your corporate head took part in crafting the law and then turns around and badmouths it. <laughs> I just, I can't. I, it's unbelievable. Seriously. Unbelievable. Yeah. So Coke, while, you know, Major League Baseball pulled out of Georgia, with the, at least with the All-Star game, big deal. Uh, what a commitment that was to their to their principles. Well, and the people that it hurt were all of the businesses that were. Yep. Yeah, you know, the communities that they claim to support are the ones that are going to hurt now. Yeah. But what has Coke done to back up their BS? Have they moved yet? Nothing. They haven't moved out of Georgia. No, they yet? haven't. They have not moved to let's say Massachusetts or New York or California. They're still headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> They're blaming. Huh. Their, their revenue issues with the cost of commodities and how the prices have gone up, which they Are have, they? which they have. But oh, how convenient is that? That's very convenient. Yeah, we've got a chart somewhere. I don't know about the commodity. Look at that right there. Commodities are going up. Uh, there you see it. There you have it. Lumber up 265 percent because, you know, they make the Coke cans with wood. <laughs> so that's probably what it is. And then they got the uh, really? crude, crude oil that's is up wood? 210%. Gasoline, yeah. 182 Oil probably does go into their cans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, gas prices, that of course would go into delivery of their product okay. to various areas. Uh, Brent crude is up 163%. Mm. I love the Brent crude. Uh, don't you? I took you for more I of a WTI. Crude. Really? Hmm. No, hmm. I, I like the Brent crude. I also like the, uh, uh, what is the other kind? The um, There's a, like a low-fat kind, or oh. there's a... Oh, sweet. 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 There's a sweet crude. <laughs> but what the, <laughs> corn prices are up, I mean, so maybe there is some... Soybeans. ...argument to uh, Coke, but how convenient, though, right? Heating oil. Uh, platinum is up 52%. Mm-hmm. Natural gas, 43%. Palladium. Man, I can't get enough palladium right. right now, but it's up 32%, so I've had, oh. to, I've had to cut back on my palladium. A lot of, lot of uh, Pat Head yesterday uh, telling us the reason they're taking these catalytic converters off is because of the rare earth metals. That yeah, are... the platinum, I think, in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, uh, Home Depot, another Georgia-based company, um, they haven't said anything negative about the Georgia law. So... Yeah, that's why people are boycotting them. Oh! Yeah. How convenient. Unbelievable. Right, I, you, it, The mob, man, the leftist mob. They don't stop. I'm going to go buy something at Home Depot even though I don't need anything at Home Depot. How about a bottle of Pepsi there in the old checkout? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And we are joined right now by uh, 4-Minute Buzz's Hillary Kennedy. Hey, Hey, Hillary. 
Uh, so you are a huge UFC fan. I am. And the UFC's been in the news quite a bit lately, especially uh, since over the weekend, they had a major event in Jacksonville, UFC... 261. 261. Uh, I thought it was like 7,035. <laughs> We're close. But yeah, close. Anyway, they had fifteen over 15,000 people jam into that place. Mm-hmm. So it's the biggest event, I think, since since the pandemic started. Indoors, anyway. The biggest indoor event since the pandemic began. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, and it was a hugely successful. They rose Namajunas. The fighter who uh, wouldn't stop bad-mouthing communism, thank goodness. Yes. Because she knows communism coming from, like, her parents came from an Eastern Bloc country. So she knows what it's like to live under communist rule. Yep. And uh, she's been really outspoken against it. And she fought somebody from China and and beat her. Right. pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, Jake Paul also KO'd Ben Askren. Here's a a look at that. Uh, What happened there? Although this is a different... Oh, oh, jeez. Yeah, this is crazy because it was in the first round. People were really expecting... Askren to put up a better fight than that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because he's a former MMA champion. He was on the Olympic wrestling team. Now, he is retired, and he said he didn't prepare for the fight the way that he should have. Right, and Jake Paul's like 24 years old. He's very young. Mm -hmm. But Paul is a very good boxer. But people were still expecting a lot more out of Askren. But Askren, he still walked away with a lot of money. He got paid $500,000 just to fight. And then, of course, he gets a cut of the (laughs) pay-per-view money as well and oh. this was shown on Triller if you don't know what that is it's kind of a social video streaming platform Snoop Dogg is part owner oh. of Triller so this oh, was wow. a big deal event Justin Bieber performed I mean they had some big names attached and Triller it kind of pisses off Dana White who runs the UFC right yes because they're sort of competition for him right but there's big money mm. to be made you know Triller proves that so they generated uh, reportedly, $75 million because they had one and Whoa. a half million pay-per-view buys, and that was in the United States alone. So it was a God. lot of eyeballs watching. So this is where it gets wow. good. This I love this because there's a lot of drama now because Jake Paul, since he beat Askren, started doing a lot of trash talking with people in the UFC, especially Daniel Cormier, who's former heavyweight champion. He does a lot of the cage side commentating. He basically called Cormier out and said... I want to fight you, fat boy. Like, (laughs) come at me. And of course, Cormier at first was like, I'm not going to pay any attention to this guy. But as time has gone on and the trash talking has increased. It's gotten to him. It's gotten to him. So uh, Mm. Saturday night, if UFC 261, Cormier came up to him because um, Jake Paul had, you know, cage side seats. So he came up after him after the the post fight interviews and got in his face. And I couldn't hear everything that they said, but he was like waving his finger in his face and they were getting really heated. And Jake Paul said, I want to fight you. So come get in the, the boxing ring. Cormier said, no way. I'm an MA fighter. Come fight me in the octagon. So Jake Paul is saying Cormier has trained, though, as a boxer. He's fought some of mm. the best strikers in the world. Uh, John Jones, Deepa Miocek. So he's like, come on, are you scared? Uh-oh. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But it will. Dana he, White's not happy about any of it. If, they, if it's an MMA fight, Cormier would kill him, crush, crush him. him. I think he probably would boxing, too. Actually, um, but he'd have a, he'd have, I mean, it, there's just no question if it's MMA, Jake Paul wouldn't stand a chance. I agree. So yeah, it'd have to be a boxing match. I just don't know that Cormier will go that <laughs> route, but again, there's so much money to be made. There's so much money on the table and so many people would pay to watch. I would pay yeah. to watch. I want to see would anybody too. knock out Jake Paul. <laughs> yeah, I'd watch that. I would definitely watch that. Uh, so... Is Jake Paul going to fight? Uh, there's also a rumor that he's he's trying to fight uh, uh, Conor McGregor. He's called out Conor and said he wants to fight him. <clears throat> is that in a boxing match too? That has to be, right? It is. And I, I would normally say Conor wouldn't do it. But again, there's so much money on the table. It's anybody's guess whether Conor would go, all right, fine. Because he he's a trash talker. He loves to take on a trash talker, just like he did with Mayweather. So that would also be huge. I mean, I think that would probably be the biggest money-making event ever. But if you are missing mm. Conor, got to look at my notes here and make sure I get it right. He is going to fight Dustin Poirier again in UFC 264, which is going to be in July. So they will have their third matchup. Where is that going to be? 
I, somewhere in July. I don't right, remember. Right. Well, that's going to be at the 7-Eleven parking lot. <laughs> right. I put you on the spot um, there. Over here but in no, It's going to be a great fight because if, if Connor loses, which I don't have any wood to knock on that he won't, but if he loses, I think he would have to hang it up after that. But if yeah. he wins, that would be huge. It's kind of weird because he was invincible at one point. Yeah. And he's sort of lost that aura of invincibility now, hasn't he? I feel like sometimes when they lose that hunger, when they don't need the money necessarily as much, uh, mm-hmm. they kind of, I don't know, I feel like maybe it's not that they don't put in the effort, but I think they just don't care quite as much as they did on the way up. So Vegas That's, for that yeah. fight in July, they, by the way. Thank you, Keith. Well, thank Justin. Are there not three fight three UFCs before that? Because this was two sixty one. That's two sixty four. So in July. what happens to two oh, yeah. sixty two and, and two sixty three? Is that the next one? Two sixty three. I, I don't know math. I I have not researched who's going huh. to be the next one. <laughs> I'm not just McGregor. looking at when, Con- but not McGregor. Yeah, she just no. knows when McGregor fights. And I don't know if anybody caught uh, Dana White. He was on Fox News. Hannity last yeah, night. Last yeah, last night. And yeah. I loved what he had to say. I do too. Here's what he had to say. It went a little something like this. This whole thing is stay out of politics. When people yes. tune in to watch sports, they don't want to hear that crap. They don't want to hear w- what your opinions are, or who you vote for, or what you're doing. They, they want to get away from everything in their life, and they want to focus on mm-hmm. with a, you know two, three, four hours, however long the sport is. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's why they're succeeding. Thank Absolute. you. Summed up in ten seconds. Yes. I mean, that's so true. The last thing you want to see when you tune into a football game or basketball or baseball is somebody mouthing off about, you know, Black Lives Matter or whatever it is. I, I, you know, I get enough of that somewhere else. And if I want that, I'll go to CNN or Fox. Absolutely. He's really smart because he said, you know, my my fighters, when they're at press conferences, it's their right to say whatever they want to say and express their opinions. And that's fine. I, I think that's great. That's why we live in America. But he was like, otherwise... You're just not going to see any preaching from us about COVID or about politics. We're we're here solely for the sport. He's a good businessman. Mm-hmm. He is. Really good businessman. All right. We'll be watching for you on the Four Minute Buzz coming up in just a few minutes. Perfect. Thanks for having me Thanks. on. Thanks. Uh, 888-900-3393. In uh, just a minute here, we've got uh, uh, Lila, Lila Rose coming up. From um, she's from the Live Action Network, the pro life movement, the millennial pro life movement, coming up in uh, in just a minute. Uh, meantime, if you're trying to sell your home, you know what a challenge that can be. Uh, that's why you need an agent who's going to come in and take charge of the situation. You need somebody who can advise you as to uh, what to do, as to what you're going to get your money out of. And uh, somebody who can sell your house in the least amount of time for the most money. That's real estate agents I trust. Plus, they're all fans of the show. And so you're going to have that in common with them. Real estate agents I trust. These are the people uh, who will take you through the whole process. They're committed to their jobs. They're not part-time. They're, they're not you know like somebody's second cousin twice removed who dabbles in real estate. These are real real estate agents in fact the best in your area go to real estate agents i trust the name really kind of says it all real estate agents i trust.com pat gray unleashed joined now by uh, lila rose leader of millennial pro-life movement live action uh, and you're releasing your first book on May 4th, huh? That's right. Congratulations. Thank you. It's called Fighting for Life, Becoming a Force for Change in a Wounded World. And I'm guessing it has something to do with uh, with being pro-life. <laughs> yes, I, it absolutely does. But it's also mm. for anybody who sees what's happening in the world, the different causes or crises, and says, okay, what can I do? I want to make a difference, but they don't necessarily know how to start. Tell us, for anybody who doesn't know, bring us up to speed on where you came from and how you got to where you are today with being so active in the pro-life movement. Sure. So I started live action as a teenager 
in Northern California. Like 15, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, 15. Good for you. And it was basically just born out of, I'm one of eight kids, so my family's very pro-life, but they weren't activists. And I became very activated after finding out about abortion. And that was at a pretty young age. Mm. And Was I had, that born of uh, religiosity or where do you think that came from? I mean, my parents definitely were conservative evangelicals. So that okay. was kind of part of my upbringing. I went through my own phase where I wasn't sure what faith I had. I actually talk about that mm-hmm. in the book. Um, but for me, it was actually finding out about abortion by seeing what abortion does to the victim that's the child. And that was through a book that I found mm. that had actual images of abortion victims. And I think anybody who actually sees wow. abortion, it changes them. You know what book that was? Mm. It's called A Handbook on Abortion by Dr. and Mrs. Wilkie. It was kind of this 1980s guidebook or handbook Yeah, I was going to say that was pro-lifers. probably a while ago. Yeah. And yeah. it was something my parents, they don't even know how it was in their home. It was <laughs> on the bottom of shelf. I found it one afternoon. And, you know, I'd, I'd heard about abortion kind of in the context of my mo- my grandmother volunteering at a pregnancy center, which was kind of a part of our family, but I didn't really know what it was. And so for me, when I saw these images and I started to learn the statistics at the time, 3000 abortions daily in America, mm-hmm. I was just heartbroken by that. And I think anybody who really has this moment of moral clarity about abortion they think I can't not do something. Mm. And for me, I was really young and Mm. I was interested in other causes as I got into my teen years, but I kept coming back to abortion because Mother Teresa, I came across her writing and she said, abortion is the greatest destroyer of peace in the world. Wow. And you know, there's a lot of causes to care about a lot of political issues, but this is it. This is if we kill our children, if we deprive the right to life from our children, what mm. good is our society? What good are our I laws? Agree. That's a quote that we need to see more of. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Universally, Mother Teresa is loved and respected. <clears throat> yep. Yes. And you pull yes. that quote out, mm-hmm. that could do some good. I, I, I often wonder, you know, speaking of Mother Teresa, why more uh, of the Catholic hierarchy doesn't speak out mm-hmm. against abortion and the politicians who support it mm-hmm. and, and fund it. And, you know, people like Joe Biden... And who's supposedly so very Catholic, and Nancy Pelosi, who is also so very Catholic, and they, I mean, it means everything to them. Well, it, some of the things mean something to them. Um, but there was a bishop recently, and I've forgotten his name, uh, who spoke out and said that there should be automatic excommunication for uh, politicians like that. Well, I mean, I, that's not his opinion. If you are publicly promoting abortion, that's grounds for excommunication. I actually mm-hmm. became Catholic in high school. And it wasn't because, or in college, I should say, when I was a college sophomore, and it wasn't because, um, you know, every bishop is brave, because not every bishop is. And some of them are deceivers, unfortunately. You know, there's, 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 you know, bad bishops. You know, Judas was one of the first, you could say, bishops, Mm -hmm. and he actually completely... um, you know, betrayed, betrayed Jesus mm-hmm. and Peter actually also betrayed Jesus. You know, he was the first Pope. So, you know, there's, we don't, there are wonderful, there have been wonderful bishops. There have been, you know, wonderful Popes, but at the end of the day, the church's teaching does not um, rely on just mere mortals. It's led by the Holy Spirit. That's, that's the teaching of the church. So that's where, you know, you look to the ag- actual magisterium. So at 15 years old, how did you put together uh live action how, how did that come to be did yeah. you have help with from your parents or how did that work <laughs> so they were definitely they let us get together in their living room and you know i got some friends together and it was just like we got to do something in san jose and you know it was very simple at the time it was just we're <laughs> going to educate our peers go to churches i took a year asking our evangelical pastor to give us access to the church to the youth group to give a pearly presentation so it took a while um, but then, you know, we started to build traction, do youth events, stuff like that. When I got to college, that's when we started doing investigative reporting. And the, the focus became bigger than California. It became bigger than San Jose, bigger than Los Angeles. It became a national focus because I realized, you know, we can do youth education. It's great. We got to do that. But the media is lying to people. The mm-hmm. school system is lying to people. As you mentioned earlier, politicians, even some religious figures are lying to people. Yeah. How do we get the truth to more people? I mean, we go one person at a time, but we also have to make use of media. And so that was um, kind of this new strategy at the time, which, you know, I know a lot of people were doing blogging and starting, you know, YouTube was brand new. Facebook was brand new. And we started to build a movement that way. How difficult is it? to get through to young people right now because they're so indoctrinated in the public school system and so indoctrinated by 
um, local politicians and national politicians, and they just think that, you know, um, abortion is a woman's right to choose. Right. Right. Uh, how do you get through to them? I mean... Is it difficult it, right now? It actually, if you're able <clears throat> to get the information to them, like showing what abortion is, like I saw as a young kid, um, showing what embryonic development looks like, you know, the parts beating at 21 and a half days. It's crazy how quickly that baby grows at seven mm. by seven weeks. There's actual brain waves. The heart beats at 21 days, 21 and a half days from the moment of fertilization. Uh, I mean, oh, a lot of women don't even know they're pregnant weeks. yet. Yes, it's three weeks. It's crazy. It's crazy how quickly that baby grows. There was a state grows. who's just, oh, it's Idaho, I believe. Mm -hmm. Idaho is uh, yeah. trying to pass a law right now that mm -hmm. the heartbeat bill. Yes. As soon as the heartbeat is yep. present, then you can't have an abortion. Yep, and a lot of other states wow. have been doing that, which is awesome. Wow. It shows the passion. So what I'm saying here is in Life Action, <clears throat> we're reaching about 10 to 15 million people a week now, mostly young people, Gen Z and millennials, and a lot of them are becoming pro-life because if you reach them with mm. the messaging and it doesn't have the you know typical left versus right filter, you, know, you mm -hmm. don't really attach political labels to it, you just provide the information in a really persuasive way, a lot of them are very open-minded. Now there is definitely this lock hold on identity of the person. Like if they identify with the left and the left is pro-abortion, then it is really hard to break through. But if we can cut past that and, and not make it about left versus right, a lot of them are open to it. And then the other thing mm -hmm. we the other thing we found too is that, you know, some of them are really desensitized or you could even say they see the child in a they dehumanize the child. So there is a small group of I think young people and older people because of their own abortion experiences, their own wounds, there's just a lot of vitriol, but they need the truth too because you're still planting seeds. You know, even if you don't change their mind in that moment with that content, years later they might think back to it when their heart is softer so either way they need the information and that's our job one of the most disturbing trends i think we've ever seen is this new situation where there are young women who are celebrating not just saying yeah mm -hmm. i got an abortion they're celebrating it's their evil. abortion it's evil it, yeah. it's absolute evil yeah and, and you see a lot of it now on youtube and and twitter and all over the internet i mean you're right there's a TikTok trend with a lot of Gen Zers where there's like, they listen to the heartbeat, they go in to get their abortion and they actually film it and they say, hear the heartbeat and then they say, let's kill it. And mm. it's just, I mean, these are the kinds My of, gosh. these are the kinds of kids who if they were alive during the time of mm. slavery, they would be making TikToks about whipping their slaves. Right. I mean, that's, that's the level of desensitization right. yeah. and cruelty that's being publicly, you know, showcased. Um, so, you know, and that, I talk about this a lot in my book, dehumanization is powerful. How did so many Germans accept the Holocaust? How did so many people accept the horrific treatment of Jews, not just in the concentration camps, mm -hmm. but all the racism against them and the institutionalized, um, you know, discrimination against them before they were shipped off to concentration camps? I mean, right. it didn't just start with the concentration camp in Nazi Germany. They ra ramped up persecution against the Jews with, you know, shutting down their shops, making them wear yellow stars, you know, calling them um, slurs publicly, beating them in the streets. There were a lot of persecution leading up to that. How did everyday people accept it? Well, they were seen as less than, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how preborn children are seen in our society. I mean, think about it. They're not even yep. considered. A, an animal has more rights in the United States to treatment, no ethical treatment, than a preborn child. You no can question. kill a child up to the moment of birth in eight states for any reason. That's, that's America today. It's crazy. It's absolutely nuts. Wow. Uh, it's so bad that we had it. Was it last week or the week before, Keith? We had a video from a woman who wanted... Her thing was to get us to 63 million. She was encouraging abortions to get the count up to 63 million. Yeah. I mean, that is uh, so sick and so depraved. It's hard to even get your head around that. It's, it's hard to imagine uh, where that point of view comes from and how they have successfully, like you said, dehumanized a, a child growing in a womb. Mm -hmm. And they won't even acknowledge, Democrats won't even acknowledge today that that's a human being. Well, it was really sad to see, you know, Andrew Yang, um, the Democratic candidate who, you know, was didn't obviously win the nomination. Biden got it. But he's kind of seen sort of as a semi-moderate-ish candidate, right? right? Yeah. Some people like him even on the right. And he came out and he said that last year, he was like, he was asked about abortion. He said, you know, basically said abortion's a tragedy. 
He said, we should love children, but I support a woman's right to choose, right? Mm -hmm. That clip went around on Twitter recently, and he got slammed. All these journalists were like, how dare you say children are a gift? You know, it's like, how dare you even question? (laughs) Is that the controversial part of the statement? That's the controversial part. Like, to say that abortion is somehow sad. How dare you? So it's no longer safe, legal, and rare. I mean, that was Hillary Clinton's thing with abortion, right? That's not their thing anymore. No. Now it's like, more, more, more. And I don't care. I mean, and it's just that. But that's the logical conclusion, right? Yeah. Of abortion. If it's not if they don't think it's a baby, if they have no right, if they can just treat it like scum. I mean, they treat Mm -hmm. newborn children like animal, like worse than animals. Then, yeah, 63 million abortions cheer for it. And you that's that's the mentality. It is hard to get somebody on the left to uh, say that there should be any limit on abortion. They won't say that anymore. You should be able to abort a baby. Right up to and almost including birth. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the Democratic Party platform today. Yeah. Abortion, they're all nine months, any reason, tax funded. Wow. But here's the thing. The vast majority of Americans, according to Gallup, Pew, all the polling companies, want abortion restrictions. And half of them are pro-life. So it's not like Americans are in line with that. And that's where education is so powerful. When we educate young people on this stuff... They're like, wow, that's crazy. I don't actually identify with this thing that I thought that I did. You know, yeah. I'm not. I, I don't personally believe that. You know, very few of them actually do. And so that's the opportunity for pro-lifers. That's the mm-hmm. opportunity for our movement. Right. We we can be the leading human rights movement in the world. We can be that. We can overcome even the political, I think, um, chaos and and divisiveness if we're willing to actually boldly, repeatedly go out and reach people and make this number one, I think we get very distracted on on our side. You know, we have a lot of things we're talking about, which yeah. there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. But, and that's the power of focus. And I talk about this in my book and the need for more people to stand up and just make this the number one. Because until we do that, who else is going to do it? Who and, else is going to make it the number one? And, and, and how does abortion? that take shape? How what, what should people do? What can we do to uh, be more active? Yes. Yeah, so th- I talk about a lot of things in the book. I'll share a couple. So first of all, I would tell anybody, leave your comfort zone. You know, I don't know if you've been outside an abortion clinic before. If you've, you know, maybe you're a person of prayer. If you've prayed for 30 minutes peacefully, even physically placing yourself there. I mean, this is in every community. It's by our churches, by mm-hmm. our schools. They're killing children, dismembering them legally mm-hmm. you can't call the police selling to save body them. parts selling body parts so we got to leave our comfort zone in our relationships so talk about this in our relationships have the hard conversations leave our comfort zone. i mean you do this every day on your show so you're you're definitely already out there talking and, and being you know courageous which is awesome but people you know getting out there physically joining you going to your pastor where's our pro-life ministry yeah. You know, we have full time right. ministry to help, you know, some places to help refugees. That's great to help, you know, homeless. That's awesome. What about children who are being slaughtered in our community? Yeah. Where's our full time ministry for them and their mothers to make sure this never happens in our church or around our church? Right. Right. So we just talk about, you know, leaving your comfort zone, getting started, making going out there and, you know, pushing through obstacles. You're going to face persecution. You're going to get people for mad sure. at you. Getting sure. used to standing alone sometimes. I mean, I think that's part of the secret, too, to successful activism. You're not always going to have a crowd of people behind you. Right. But if you do it the first time, even if you're scared, it's amazing how much uh, easier it is to do it the second time. Lila Rose from Live Action. Her book, Fighting for Life, Becoming a Force for Change in a Wounded World. Where you can, where you can get that? Uh, Anywhere you buy books. Okay. Anywhere you get books, you can check out Fighting for Life. Hope is encouraged. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Thanks for, for all the work me. that you've done. Of course. Thanks for having me. Pat Gray, only on the Blaze Radio Thank Network. You guys.